Okay, the source of solar activity. I reverse things. What you see on the sun is called beauty spots, and what you have on your skin is sunspots. When you think about it, <laughs> you, have sun, you have the beauty spots due to the ultraviolet that comes from the sun, so in a sense, it makes sense. As I said, I like to personalize things. So, sunspots are basically those regions of strong magnetic field. Okay, I missed a point here. When you form the magnetic field in the convection zone, it doesn't stay there, okay? Magnetic field, when it's amplified, tends to become buoyant. It's like you have a bubble of air in the water. When you amplify the magnetic field, it becomes buoyant, it rises to the surface, and when it reaches the surface, it appears at a, at a, as a loop, a white ball. So you, you never have a single sunspot emerging from the surface. They always come in pairs. Like the magnet has two poles, not itself. So this is a sunspot group. It's not a simple one. It's not the best example, because what you see here is at least five dark regions. But here, this is a better example. You have one polarity here, one polarity there. I will give you a better example of sunspot. So the important thing is. So do they do this, then? Hmm? When I think of a bar magnet, in uh -huh. terms of the poles north and south, emerging, you just, so they become lateral? You take a bar magnet and right. let it flat on the, on the table. That's what basically is. So as you'll see in a few slides, sunspots are responsible for the intense X-ray emission coming from the solar corona. And they're also the regions where flares and coronal mass ejections come from. And I'll try to make fun of astronomers because they know very little about the sun. When they see something black on the sky and it looks like a hole, for them it's a black hole. <laughs> not always, not in the case of the sun. <laughs> All right, here is a close view of sunspot. Away from sunspots, you see these little white dots. These are the convective cells, typical convective cells in the convective layer. Uh, the bright ones are the ones that are just coming. This is the updraft of the convective cells, and the dark ones are the downdraft. So when the convective cells reach the surface, they release the heat, they get heavy again, they start to sink. And then these are the regions of magnetic field. They're dark because the magnetic field suppresses convection. When magnetic field suppresses convection, what happens is those regions on the surface cool down over time because there is no fresh supply of heat from deeper layers. That's why these regions are darker. And they're not just darker, but they're also a little bit deeper than the rest of the sun. So if you look at uh, actual three-dimensional picture of, of sunspots and the surrounding convective cells, these regions are a little bit deeper in the sun than the surrounding uh, convective cells. So, here is a picture the, the of... The reason the magnetic field yes. suppresses convection is because it forces it to go in the plane rather than vertical and up and down? Yes. That's right. Here is a typical sunspot group. And here I plotted a, a cartoon of bar magnet. So you have one polarity, one sunspot, opposite sunspot. They produce magnetic field that goes off of the plane and connects the two. Some sunspots are not very simple. Most of them are complicated. So it's not always easy to, to put a bar magnet and say, OK, this is uh, a simple bipolar region. Some of the sunspots emerge as complicated structures. So it's not always easy oh. to, and they're not always simple dipoles. Isn't it more like a horseshoe than a bar magnet? I mean, the, the fields of, of the poles are pointing out, right? Is that correct? Or is it pointing on the surface? It's pointing out. So it's more like a horseshoe? Sure, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, I should put a caution. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys know that? How do you know the, which, is, which side is which? Oh, this is just a sketch. Just a guess. Well, you, you but know. in principle, you can you yeah, can, you can figure it out. Yes. Uh, on the charge oh. yeah. So uh, this is, by looking at the Zeeman splitting, you can tell what the two polarities are. What this basically measures is the line of sight magnetic field. So I can tell which uh, dark 
comes towards us and why it points away from us. Okay. This is only one component of the magnetic field. How do you measure that, though? Hmm? How, do you, how do you see that? There's, uh, due to the Zeeman effect. Oh, okay. You can look at the Zeeman speed, you can measure the field strength, and then I'm not very well experienced with the observational techniques, but there's some standard methods to, to get orientation at least of the line of sight magnetic field. <coughs> But when you look at the intensity of the line, as I said, there will be a lower intensity in this region. So it is one polarity, opposite polarity. So this is a sunspot curve. That's another one and so forth. So this is at the level, at the height of the photosphere. When you go higher up, in the chromosphere, you see that the dark regions are now alternated with bright, bright regions, which means that these regions emit lots of light in the extreme ultraviolet. You can go higher up in the corona and the picture doesn't get any different. You see increased emission from those sunspots, above the sunspots. And you can go even to coronal temperatures and you see that there's lots of soft X-rays and extreme ultraviolet coming from regions above magnetic field.